Welcome back to the Crochet Crown. It's was my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm going to show you how to do some surface overlay. Surface overlay is the concept where we're going to add something to an existing project that has nothing to do with construction. So it's more aesthetic and this is the way to add names or just really kind of fun stuff to the top of something just to give it a little bit more of a pop. And again this is completely up to you. Let's talk a little bit more about this concept. So with surface overlay some people really don't like this kind of concept. Other people it's the final cherry on top of the ice cream. So what happens with this is that you can have a really cool granny square like so. It's very basic but then you can add surface overlay it and make something really basic to be quite amazing. So today I'm going to show you how that's done in order to do it and there's many different possibilities. This is just going to be the way I'm going to show you today. But I really want to show you how to get started and how to finish off because the way you finish off when during surface overlay matters because you want it to make it look good each and every time. So without further ado what you want to do is that you want to take an existing project that you have and it could be a full size blanket. It's up to you and you want to grab the same kind of yarn that you're working with or the same kind of ply, ply. So if you want to change up something you know it's completely up to you and use the same uh, size crochet hook that you did with your stitches because that will matter. So let's begin to do surface overlay. We're going to create a slip knot first and what I want to do is that I want to circle one of the rounds with this overlay technique. So let's just choose a nice one right here. It's just smaller and what I want to avoid is that I don't want to choose something right in the corner. I just want to be offset a little bit. It just makes it easier for me. So now with the slip knot in this hand I want to insert my hook in between two posts that are in the round. So just go in between two posts. It can be any one and just peel back the work like this so that the hook is sticking out the back and then I want you to put the yarn onto the hook and I want you to pull it somewhat snug but not too crazy tight and then I want you to throw the yarn that is leading to the very end of the ball away outside and then I want you to put the other yarn strand leading to the ball into your hand as if you're regularly crocheting. So you're gonna just pull that loop through to the front side. So notice that the working hand of the yarn is actually behind the product project. It's not in front. So with this hook now I want to jump into the next space of the next post. So just jumping into the next one and then just from behind I want to wrap the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball through the around the hook and then back through the front side and then back through the loop. So it's just a slip stitch. So then the next one is just into the next space that's available to you. So it's just in. So let me uh, just uh, zoom in the camera now and just uh, quickly show you up close. So I'm just picking up exactly where I left off. So I'm just gonna come to the back. You don't have to peel it back to see it all the time. You can just pull through. I'm just doing it for your benefit. Pull through and then pull through the loop. I'm just going a little bit slower than I would. So then I'm gonna go into the next space. So just dive on through. I'm just gonna prove it to you. I'm just wrapping the the yarn in behind and pulling it through. Okay. So then I'm gonna go to the next post. So I'm just gonna circle around with this round. So I'm just gonna go into the next gap space. So in. So I'm just gonna peel back the work just to prove it to you. I'm just wrapping the hook. I'm gonna push it. So once it's wrapped I push it back and I pull through and through. Okay. I go to the next gap. If you can get used to it, it just is a lot easier to be able to just use your hands in behind and just use your fingers and wrap it. See it just naturally is connected to the hook because I've been doing this a while. So just through. So let me just show you what I'm doing back there. So when it comes around I'm just using my finger just to give it tension and then I can just push it back. So all I just need to do then is this I just need to circle around and this is the way you can spell names and you can do a lot of fun stuff with the surface overlay. Um, it's really quite easy to do and uh, it's not a big deal. But how do you finish surface overlay when it looks so obvious in the way that the stitches are? I'm gonna be showing you that technique next because that does matter on how you finish and I'm gonna be showing you a technique that I've rarely used and uh, I figured out how to do it in order to get a really good look. So once you get to a corner space just jump right over and just turn the corner and just continue along. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm coming all the way back around and I have one more one to go. So I'm just gonna go into that very last one and then we have a problem. So the problem is is that if you finish it off conventionally like crochet so you're gonna go into the first slip stitch and pull through. Where are you gonna pull through? 
There's no yarn here. So the problem is, is if you try to finish it off conventionally like regular crochet, you end up with a really unsightly gap. So the way that I see it here, when you have, for example, when you finish it off conventionally, you always end up with a, with a hump. So the best way to finish this off, and I kid you not, is, and this is the way I would do it. So the yarn leading to the yarn ball, you wanna trim. And all you're just gonna do is that you're gonna pull up this now and it will pull the remaining of that yarn. So you're thinking to yourself, well you never really did attach it to the first one. So the other one, because you were loose about it, is still hanging off in the back. So the problem is, is that this one here is not attached to the front. So here's how you do it. This is a really cool technique. So fasten on, on your boots, it's a, it's a good one. So you wanna get your darning needle out and you wanna mimic that you've actually done a crochet stitch without actually doing one. So here's how you do it. So you just take the darning needle and you just scoop underneath this, these two strands here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull the yarn strand to give the illusion of the stitch on the one side, okay? And then you're going to then circle back to the other one that you just came from. So what it was now you've got the string now leading to it and the string leading back and it's almost seamless. So now this last strand you just had, you were gonna dive to the back side. So just coming around to the side of it, don't dive through the middle of it because then you'll see it. So just dive in behind, so just off to the side and then behind the work. And just pull snug. So therefore it's almost perfect. This is a lot better than what you can get through conventional crochet. So then all you're just gonna do is that you wanna keep these well hidden. So you're just gonna glide it in some of the stitch work in the back that'll never appear in the forward. So you're guiding it through. If you can see this needle on the front side, you've gone way too deep. So you're just keeping it to the back side strands only and you're gonna go one and then you're gonna go two. So you're gonna go down a different path but still on the back side, two, and then coming back for three. Again, if you turn this over, you can see that needle, you've gone way too deep. So that was just one strand. So you have to then deal with the starting strand. So once you've gone three times, trim it down, and now you wanna finish off this beginning one. So I had you leave an extra long tail, and all you're just gonna do is that the front side's already dealt with, so you're just gonna do the same thing, which is guiding it underneath again, you should never see that needle on the front side. So you're gonna go one, two, and you want to go a third time as a charm. So you wanna continue to do it close to where the other color is so that it's not so unsightly just in case somebody turns over your afghan. Especially if you go to a <laughs> fair or something where the judge turns it over. So what happens is that you can have a surface overlay. It looks almost close to being perfect just like you see here and you can have a lot of fun with these kind of concepts. So it's more aesthetic than it is uh, uh, construction based and that it can provide you some really cool looks if you would like to go with that route. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarns Bracelets as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.